then ended up going out today. I was busy with his friends to make me jealous. How should I feel? Um, so I can't help you with your relationship issues unless uh, we do it on a coaching session because there's there's much to unpack when it comes to giving you direction on what you should be doing uh right there's there's always so much to a story so general knowledge yeah let's do it individual situations you know unless it's so blatantly obvious like you know he cheated on me three times should i give him another chance no uh, right? Unless it's so blatantly such an obvious, obvious answer for me. Um, but it, when it comes to particulars, uh, I do need more details in order to uh, give you a plan of action. How to deal with a guy who is one foot in, one foot out. What do you want? State what you want and say, you know, I'm not going to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't want what I want. So do you know what you want? No, you don't. You don't know what you want. Then I need to move on because I need to get into a relationship with somebody who is on the same page as me. So if you're fully committed, that means being in a relationship with somebody who is fully committed. How to help a partner that doesn't like expressing emotions. You don't, you don't need to. Right? You, you don't need to help them like expressing their emotions. A lot of people would rather say than talk, right? Men, um, they're, they're much better at sort of expressing themselves through actions than they are through words. So um, instead of looking for them to express themselves in words, how are they expressing themselves? My husband doesn't have to say, I'm upset or I'm mad or I'm frustrated or there's things that are on my mind. I see that on him, right? I, I, can, I can look at him, I can observe him, and I can see when he's in certain emotional states. He doesn't have to tell me, he doesn't have to put it into words. So what I suggest you do, my love, is grab fix that shit. You do get more communication when you create a relationship that feels emotionally safe. If you can do what's in fix that shit and create a relationship that feels emotionally safe, you will get more communication from your partner. If you don't give another chance with cheating, what do you do with future relationships? You find somebody who is honest and loyal. Step one to move on. <laughs> Step one to move on, if your heart is hurting, is read Come Back Queen, do what's in that book. If you're ready to like go find your next partner, then grab no more assholes. Nikki dogs, mentally process 5,000 words a day. A quarter. So I saw these, there's, you know, supposedly some studies. Somebody made a TikTok like, oh, that's been debunked. Yeah? Explain this to me. When I ask my husband, how's your day? And he says, good. And when I ask my girlfriend, Melissa, how's your day? I get a story. Not that my husband, you know, wouldn't, like is holding anything back. It's just his answers are much more concise. When I ask him a question, his answers tend to be more concise. Megan, hello, buddy Ann. How do you deal with a partner letting you know you're too physically needy? You do a love language quiz together at the same time and exchange your results. More than likely, your physical affection love scale is higher than his physical affection love scale. When he sees that, then it's going to create some understanding in his brain. Oh, that's why I feel this way because of this disparity. Um, best thing I ever did for myself was get into a relationship with somebody who shares physical affection as a love language. I've been in your shoes. I've been in relationships to, um, with, with people who felt I was too physically needy. And it was because they didn't share physical affection as a love language the way I did. I got your books today. You did. You did, Tessa. Did you start reading? Let me know what you think. Liggy dogs, my boyfriend took my car to his mechanic shop, did oil change and fixed my IC and washed my car. That is love. 
that right there is love 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 do you do couples uh coaching yes i do um if you want to get a coaching session go to my bio click on the link tree um and like when you get a session you can show up alone your partner can come the two of you can come together you come the way you want it is completely up to you uh go to my bio click that get a coaching session button it takes you to a page read that carefully follow the instructions to book yourself in for a session i love your glasses you guys have been saying this ever since i put these suckers on um they are not prescription they are blue light blocking glasses they have helped my vision since i started using them um, my vision was deteriorating rather quickly because of all these lights and screens and um, I do notice a difference. If you want to get your own, I did put the link to these in the link tree in my bio. Didn't read yet, starting tomorrow with Comeback Queen. I did my first meditation session. How was it? My books are on the way. I'm so impatient. I want to start reading today, right? do you want to uh tell you what if you want to sh like shout out a book name even a page number if you want i'll do a book roulette i'll read from that book uh what are your coaching offers so go to my, bu my bio click on the link tree and click on that get a coaching session button you're going to see the different options that i have you can get an individual session you can get the no more insecurity program which is designed to deprogram overthinking, jealousy, insecurity. Um, you can get the five sessions plus support that gives you access, like email access to me in between sessions so that you can keep the momentum going. How do I know if I should get back with my ex if he told me he wasn't happy in the relationship? Come get a coaching session if you're unclear. If you guys need clarity or a plan, um, come and get a coaching session so that I can do an assessment on your relationship and give you some clarity, like, you know, common questions. Should I stay? Should I go? How can I make my relationship better? How should I be, you know, reading into the behaviors that are happening in my relationship? Hello. How do I feel about breaks? A break is a break up. Nobody has the right to say, I don't want to be with you, but I don't want you to be with anybody else. Does the three month no kissing rule begin from the day you start talking or from the first face-to-face -face meeting? First face-to-face -face meeting. Queen. Uh, lovelies, who wants a notification when I go live? Say I do. Uh, my reception might be spotty. Let me know if I'm fritzing out at all, you guys. Is it normal to argue often in a relationship? Unfortunately, it's normal, but it's not good. Um, what is good is not fighting at all. If you want to get to zero fighting, which is what I have with my husband, after 10 years of fighting, we now have five years without a single fight. It is absolutely amazing. Every single day is loving, close, intimate, affectionate, kissy, um really great like super amazing if this is something that you want uh grab a copy of fix that shit this is the step-by-step -step guide on how to achieve that if you're with a generous long-term thinker who loves you you always have the best outfits thank you this is really cute this one here this is like a bodysuit uh if someone doesn't share your first love language do you accept less of it if they show it every other way yes so for example, I would never compromise on physical affection, by the way, that is like the one. Um, now my husband is, and, and we both share that as a love language, but when we took the quiz, both of us had like, like t let's say 20, let's just pick a number on my butt. Both of us had 20 on two love languages. So both of us had physical affection and then he's acts of service and I'm words of affirmation. So he doesn't do words of affirmation. I translate his acts of service. I let you guys give me words of affirmation. So my love bank is always full. Is it possible to never get over your first love? Everything is possible. What's the best way to get over your insecurities? Honestly, come take the No More Insecurity program. I am highly effective at what I do. I should be charging more and I, I'm not even joking. I'm not even joking. I would make so much more money if I was less efficient, um, but I'm very efficient. So 
people don't need me as long as they need typical therapy. Um, and so people who take my No More Insecurity program and do the work that I give them have a rapid change. So somebody said, explain the three months no kissing. So everybody's lips secretes a chemical that doesn't do anything to them till it comes in contact with another set of lips. That combination is phenylethylamine. It is an aphrodisiac, antidepressant, and amphetamine. When you kiss somebody you don't know, you introduce an aphrodisiac, amphetamine, and antidepressant into your system, making you chemically high. Now, you think this person is amazing because you feel so great around them. It's not true. You actually don't know them. So you've literally committed to a stranger because if you're like most people, if you're like most women, when you kiss somebody on a first, second, or third date and somebody else asks you out the next day, most women say, no, I'm seeing somebody, which means you've committed to someone you don't know. You've become exclusive for a complete stranger. You are shutting down opportunities for other people to show you who they are for someone you don't know, which doesn't make any sense. Now, you're going to have an ama amazing honeymoon because not only are you chemically high off the newness, which we all know you don't even need to kiss to feel like a little pitter-patter about somebody waiting for their text message, waiting for that date, right? So you're already high off the chemical high of the newness. You add phenylethylamine on top of that and you've literally lost your mind because you're gonna say, no, I'm seeing someone even though you kissed on the first, second or third date. You're all excited, you're building a story inside your head about how amazing they are, the marriage you're gonna have, the kids you're gonna have, like you're just creating a whole future with them even though you barely know them. Now, after about three months or so, the red flags that were always there that you weren't feeling because you were so high off these chemicals are gonna start affecting you. Now you're really gonna notice them. You're gonna go, hey, wait a second, things need to change here. You're gonna get that pushback from them because they were pretty happy being themselves. And now you're saying, uh-uh, things gotta change. And it's like, fight, fight, fight. But you're like, oh, those first three months were so good. If I stay and try harder, I can get back to how great that was. Not realizing that that was great because of a chemical high, which you will not get back. It's like trying, like, you know, the first time you do MDMA, wow, you never get that first experience again. So now all the chemicals are wearing off. Now you're really being affected by the red flags, but now you're six months in going, geez, I've, you know, I just don't want to start over again. Maybe if I try harder, this is going to work out. And now you're in for a year, two, seven, ten. How long does somebody, some of you guys stay in the wrong relationship before you go, you know what, I give up, I give up. Like this really just isn't working and I'm going to move on. So no kissing for three months is all about not wasting any time by thinking something about a person that isn't actually true. Feeling something for a person that isn't actually valid and fooling yourself for far too long. So when you say to somebody, hey, I'm using a no kissing for three months dating role because I'm looking for a long-term relationship, not a hookup. Short criteria, long list of criteria. I need to know, do they match the criteria? Do they want what I want? Are we compatible? Do they make me laugh? Are they honest? Are they hardworking? Are they loyal? Are they conscientious? Are they thoughtful? Are they consistent? Are they real or what they're saying really isn't true? Oh, am I the side chick? I mean, I don't know. I've never been to his house or met his kids or met his friends right like don't get wrapped up in bullshit don't be one of those people that messages me going hey it's been eight months i haven't met his kids and i've never met his friends um and and he says he's not ready for a relationship what do i do and i'm like girl you stop playing the hoping game you stop hoping he's going to include you in your life stop kissing people who don't include you in their life when you want to be included in their life when somebody says it's too early for you to meet my friends it's too early for you to meet my kid it's it you know it's it's too early to say if i'm ready for a relationship because it's too early then motherfucker it's too early for us to kiss i don't want to kiss somebody who's not comfortable with me you know why because i'm not insane so when using no kissing for three months dating rule you get rid of the insanity 
that happens when you kiss to see where it goes, when you go at their pace instead of your pace. My pace is knowledge and insight. Your pace is sexuality. Fuck you. I want knowledge and insight. I'm not going to make a mistake the next time around. And anybody who can't hang around me for three months and get to know me, please keep walking because I'm not interested in somebody who's not interested in me. Would you rather waste less than three months than years? Yes. Would a three month no kissing rule be just as effective if it's a long distance relationship? What is the level of attention that you're getting? Uh, I'm a guy and have thought about reading your books, but was wondering, are they written for women? I have one for you. I have one for you. Here it is. It's the perfect play. So this is your dating book. So No More Asshole teaches women how to get into a relationship with a generous long-term thinker. The perfect play teaches men how to get into a relationship with a generous long-term thinker. Lots of really great advice in here for you. Hello from Scotland. How to help your partner with insecurities? They have to do it themselves, my love. Ted Talk. Can you stop with intimacy if you were already intimate? Yes, you can do anything you want. I agree with all that, but learn the hard way. Yeah, so did I. So did I. Guys, who wants a notification when I go live? Say, I do. I'm looking at your, where are you? I'm looking at your website to look at costs and prices on self-esteem class. So the No More Insecurity, the No More Insecurity program. Uh, right, so go to, uh, it's, it's the No More Insecurity program. So uh, you, you can click on the coaching button. You're gonna see there's an options. Uh, it gives you a drop down and you can select the No More Insecurity program there. There's also a button there that says courses. You're gonna see the No More Inse Insecurity program there. Uh, under the courses tab, there's actually like a sell page for the No More Insecurity program with like a video and some testimonials. Do you do payment plans for low income families? Um, all of my coaching sessions are prepaid. So um, if you like, you, you can do a, a payment plan, but it, it has to be prepaid before we get on our call. The way that I can show up for you guys, like just absolutely present is by not being frustrated by people who would fuck me over. Uh, so everything is prepaid. Um, that way I never have any residual negative feelings because somebody didn't pay. Did you do the no kissing rule on your husband? I sure did. Uh, I, I would I would accept insurance if they would if they would you know accept me. So I don't have a PhD. Um, so you would have to talk to your insurance company and see if they would cover my services. Hi. Do you coach on female led relationships? I sure do. Yes, worked with a lesbian today actually. Do you travel for what? Me? Those of you who want a notification when I go live, click my picture here once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up and the pop-up is a bell. Click on the bell when you do that, say I just did. Were you officially dating in the three month rule? So I, I did it by accident with my husband. We did break up a few times. I did date other people during those times. I did purposefully use the no kissing for three months dating rule with those other people that I dated. And I would have kissed them because I dated two men. They were amazing, incredible. There was no reason not to. I, I would have, I absolutely would have had I not been consciously using a no kissing for three months dating rule. But before I got to three months, my husband won me back, which is why I am where I am today. Because had I kissed somebody else, um, he wouldn't have had a chance. I would have said, sorry, I'm not going back to you. I'm seeing someone. Great topic. So many people I know date wrong guys and don't know what they're doing wrong. It's the kiss. It's kissing too early. And they're kissing too early because that's what our culture says to do. Our culture says to kiss to see where it goes. But who's running our culture? Like who owns the, the cosmetic companies? Men. Who owns the clothing companies? Men. So who's, who's running our lives? 
man. Like, who owns the movie studios, the TV studios, men, the media studios, men? So who's telling us what to do? Men. So who's setting the pace? Men. Whose turn is it to set the pace? Women. Men have a 24-7 fertility cycle. If we go at their pace, it's sex, sex, sex right away because that's how they're designed. We need to set the pace. We have the slower pace. Our fertility cycle is two days. Uh, I agree there. This is a ma uh, this is a message to my divine feminine. Love that. Uh, hey. Only day when thinking of old memories and feel bad for moving on because I still want him back. I wish I met you earlier. I've been in domestic violence relationships. Yes, men with alcohol, drugs. Yes. I'm here for you, my love. Do you think there should be a leader in a relationship? If so, what do they lead in? I think women should be the emotional leader in the relationship. Men look to, like our men are looking to us going, how are we going to do this? Like once, when they commit to a relationship with us, how are we gonna do this? So we should show them how we're going to do this. How are we gonna be calm? How are we gonna resolve conflict? How are we gonna deal with our emotions? How many guys did you date before you found your husband? Um, relationships, relationships, uh, one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, at least eight, nine. I've not had a date for six years. I like someone at work. I sometimes think she likes me. You don't want to date someone at work, my love. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that because if it doesn't work, if it doesn't work, how unhappy will you be? Is there a suggested time frame from a serious relationship to dating again? Uh, no, the time frame is no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers for three months. Um, so you can get out there, you can meet somebody tomorrow, but use that no kissing and sleepovers for three months, like buffer to make sure you choose the right person. So you don't need, it doesn't matter how long you wait. It's, it's something I keep saying is you can wait 10 years and fall into the wrong relationship because you kiss a stranger. You can start dating immediately and pick the right person because you use knowledge and insight. So make sure you grab no more assholes, my love. Uh, not only do you need to use that no kissing for three months dating rule, you have to like you, you, the, the person you choose has to pass the 12 character traits that are in this book. Is it good for a 15 year old to be in a relationship? My daughter has started a relationship at 15. There's nothing wrong with that. It is normal for us when we become of procreation age, right? So when her fertility kicks in, it's normal for her to want to do that. This is her biology that is driving her. What you need to do is educate her. So grab Dating 101 because this teaches her what dating is all about, what relationships are all about, what boundaries are all about, how to maintain your boundaries, what to do when somebody pushes against your boundaries. If my ex comes back, should I use a no kissing rule on him to see if we truly should date again? Yes, absolutely. And get also fix that shit so that you understand how to relationship. Because if it didn't work before and you guys aren't changing anything, it won't work again. There is a delay. So obviously you are not here to learn, which means you need to go.
work relationships can be very messy. I don't have kids. Don't poo where you sleep. That's right. I don't have kids, but my husband has two. I think if it does not work, I would be unhappy, but work would not make it worse. No, it's it's not that work would make it worse. It's that you have to see this person at work. It's it's there you 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 can't avoid them, right? You can't avoid them, and so you know then you have to face them. So if they hurt you, right? If they really hurt you and you're like, fuck that person. And and the person that you're thinking, fuck that person is the person you work with. How uncomfortable is that gonna be? What do you think of high school sweethearts? Do they still exist? Yes, that still happens. Uh, so true. Can you read something from your favorite book? Oh, that would be fix that shit. Um, that would be fix that shit. Book roulette on fix that shit. Uh, with the woman as the emotional leader in the relationship, what do men lead in? Uh, men are really good at putting their head down and getting the job done. Like they, everybody, everybody, everybody contribute strengths to a relationship um the, like a superpower seriously that men have like i work best when i'm at my best my husband works best all the fucking time because he's just like just put the head down get the job done um that's that's an incredible strength um the emotional center of the household is always the woman, the woman, right? When mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. There's a reason why that saying exists. So when we take on that role as we should, because we are the emotional center, when the kids come out of us, whose faces are they looking at to see, is this right? Is this okay? How are we doing? How are we doing? Are we okay? They're looking at mama. So it's instinctual for us to look at the mother figure in the household and gauge the temperature to feel how's this household going. It's very natural for us to do that. Book roulette, I love playing that. Don't, didn't know there was a word for it. Cute. Guy she's dating is a really bad influence. Don't know how to get her away from him. Of course, she's an adult. She's making her own decisions. So, you know what? Make it a boundary. Like say, you know what? Like this guy, I really just I don't want I don't want to hear about your relationship with him cuz you and I both know he's bad news and um and I, I think there's there's much better things to talk about than what this guy is doing and what you're doing with him and you know, all those all those things that you know you shouldn't be doing. So, those things I don't want to talk about. We can talk about anything else, but not about that. Because we both know this isn't a relationship you should even be in. What book would you recommend for my daughters? 18, soon to be 19 and 17. So there's two. There's Dating 101 and No More Assholes. This is understanding the drives, the drives behaviors, and emotions behind love. This is understanding how to find your next partner, the vetting process. Book roulette, book roulette, book roulette, fix that shit. Uh, guys, page number. What page do you want? Book roulette, fix that shit. Give me a page number. What do you do when you have regrets about spending too much time with boyfriend over friends? Make some dates with your friends. Call up your friends. 21. Call up your friends and say, hey, let's go for sushi. 21, this is your brain on meditation. Ooh, ooh, was that 21? 51. Look at you guys. Look at all the, you guys are so cute. Uh, your brain loves meditation. It's the insert most soothing thing you can possibly imagine here. Uh, it's natural for your brain to rest and relax on a regular basis, to not be constantly bombarded with images and words and sounds and be able to just lull itself into a quiet space. I want you to take a moment to transport yourself to the life your ancestors lived a few hundred thousand years ago. Our predecessors, early Homo sapien, experienced short, danger-filled lives, but they also lived in times where they cohabitated 
in close tribal groups surrounded by nature. Sure, they had a lot of moments where they were fearful, but their hunting gathering existence meant they also zoned out picking berries, digging up roots, quietly hunting, tanning skins, roaming beautiful territories, and peacefully working together to ensure survival of the group. Do you repeat information from book to book? I do. Yeah. And I'm, I'm honest about that too. Uh, like as I wrote nine books, you guys, like by the time I was like writing book three, four, five, six, meditation is the first step in all my books. I was like this section right here, the instructions on how to meditate, I'm copy pasting. So yes, I do. I do. I do repeat uh, some information from book to book. Like, uh, you know, in some ways, Comeback Queen resembles No More Assholes because there's some healing and then there's some like, let's get you ready for your next relationship. Um, hello, can you do 51? I feel drawn to that page. Yes, you're welcome. Uh, I will keep thinking of this. You're welcome. Is it worth it to buy both of those books or just one? Which one? Come back queen and or no more assholes? It depends where your emotions are. There's definitely some like there's there's some some information that's repeated because there's only so many different ways you can teach people how to meditate, right? The steps to meditation, um, which is why ultimately I was like, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm copy pasting. Um, but uh like if you are hurt from your last breakup i there's there's definitely different things in here that are not in no more assholes no more assholes there's a small section called first things first about helping you get over your last relationship um but uh then it it's quite different from comeback queen uh, can I meditate while driving or bike riding if it calms me? It's so hard to just for me to just sit still. Yeah, yes, you can. I do like walking meditations all the time. I'll do like manifestations. I'll throw manifestations into the road and I'll walk into them. Uh, anything relates to anxiety? Oh God, every single book. Yes, in every single book I teach you. Page 51, page 51. <clears throat> Here's the thing, you can have the feeling without having an outward reaction. You can have the emotion without looking for something outside of yourself to pin it on. You can experience angst without doing anything more than saying to yourself, huh, I'm feeling anxious right now. You can acknowledge your feelings and best of all, you can own them and move on because a lot of them, more than you know, are just blips in your brain. Make sure your eyes are open, yes. Good to know that, thank you. How do we buy a book? Uh, go to Amazon, you can you can get the paperback or ebook off of Amazon. If you want a audio book, uh, you can get Fix That Shit only through the link tree in my bio though. So good. My best friend lets her boyfriend decide her mood 24 seven, for example. Oh, I'm gonna do puzzle pieces. And that's where you use silence, yes. When it's a blip in your brain. Yeah, let the moment pass, everything is a moment. How was my dinner? It was delicious. It was delicious. I believe he's a bad influence on her. How do I go on about it? She's an adult. She's making her own decisions. There's nothing you can do. She needs to decide for herself what her life is going to look like. The, the one thing you can do is just have a boundary where you're like, if you're going to complain about this person, I don't want to hear about it. What if my partner says something upsetting to me, but me staying silent lets him know I'm upset? Come get a coaching session if you want to learn how to deal with that. 
Are you playing a soundscape in the background? I'm playing a meditation track by Rich Pendlebury. It's a, a chakra balancing track. It's on my YouTube channel. If you go to my YouTube channel, there's a link to that in the link to my bio, or you can um, go to YouTube, type in Canada's Dating Coach, uh, and um, you'll see the, the Rich Pendlebury tracks are at the top of the Let's Meditate playlist, and you'll find that uh, chakra balancing one there. I broke the no kissing rule. Can I come back from that? Yep, grab no more assholes. That's your. That's the first way you can come back from that. It's peaceful. I'm a single mom with seven kids out of 14, trying to survive my anxieties and small depression. Queen, 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 queen. Uh, grab no more assholes is gonna help you with that. Do what's in the book. Do you need to focus when doing meditation or just zone out? I focus on the music. I also focus on manifesting. I recommend you to everyone I know. I appreciate that. Thank you. What is your average day like with your husband? Uh, so we get usually, I mean, I, I tell him to wake me up in the morning. Sometimes he gets up and goes to work and he doesn't wake me up. So. Um, and I want him to wake me to wake me up. I, I don't I don't really look to sleep in um, So usually we get up together. I make him breakfast either he takes it with him or he leaves and I go bring it to the shop because the shop is right behind the house um, and uh, And then I do some work do some reading Oh, Maggie's dreaming uh, And then I make lunch. I go bring him lunch. I get another kiss uh, come back to work, make supper, bring him supper, get another kiss, come back to work, he comes home, I make him salsa guacamole, some kisses, some snuggles, and then we go to sleep, and then start the whole thing over the next day. Almost two years now that I'm single, try dating a guy 14 years older than me, it didn't work. Uh, are you doing what's in No More Assholes? How do we fix a toxic relationship if we both want to be together? So you need to grab fix that shit or come get some coaching. If you're getting fix that shit, you have to do, 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 do what is in that book. This is a manual. Just reading it is not enough. This is an action guide. This is what you do to have a healthy relationship. You're welcome. What do you do if you break the no kissing rule with a guy you liked? You dump them, you grab no more assholes. Look at those 12 character traits. Make sure he meets those 12 character traits. How did you know you truly did not want kids? Everyone says I'll change my mind, but I don't think so. Uh, so I took a year uh, and I, I like every parent that I talked to, like every parent I met, like seriously, I would go to a party and I would be like approaching strangers. Like, I, I don't know you, but I wanna know what's the best part, what's the worst part about having kids? And so I asked that question to every parent I met, what's the best part, what's the worst part? And boy, let me tell you, their faces told me everything. Um, they'd be like, oh, right? It's a lot of work. I heard that a lot. It's a lot of work. Um, so I, I interviewed every parent I came across. I asked myself some tough questions. Like I did the research, how much does it cost? How, how much money are you spending on these people? Um, you know, from conception until they stop mooching off you. How much is that going to cost? Uh, I took a look at that. I said, do I want to spend that money? I asked myself, am I willing to sacrifice my time, my goals, my dreams, maybe just in the short term, but you know, shit, shit gets push, pushed aside when you have kids. Um, you can't say n n no, right? <laughs> uh no no i'm not gonna go grocery shopping for you i'm not gonna not not gonna you know not like not gonna go buy you some the, the clothes that you need right so it's time it's expenses am i willing to invest that time and expense at my own sacrifice um <clears throat> we all romanticize kids right who is thinking uh like, hey, I might have a kid that is never out of diapers and never leaves a bed and is always an in like a like an adult, like I have a 46 year old infant for some reason because they were born that way or because there was a terrible accident. Um, am I willing to have a 46 year old infant in my life when I'm 
60 something or what, how old was I? I was I was 30 30 when I did that so uh, do I do I want a 46 year old infant when I'm in my 70s so I asked myself those questions and and the answer was no I don't I don't after a full year of thinking about it interviewing and asking myself the tough questions the answer is no I don't do you think it's worth it to fix a toxic relationship? If you want to know if it's worth it to fix your toxic relationship, you would need to get a coaching session. It depends. The answer to that is it depends. I don't want kids either for all the same reasons. My family constantly bugs me about it. Say, listen, uh, you know this as well as I do. Variables happen things happen and I don't want to be 70 something years old having a 46 year old infant in my home what is what if someone uses their work all the time and don't have time but also uh come get coaching love if you want to clarify that how should I as a man make sure I truly know myself before entering a relationship I don't think there's such thing as truly knowing yourself because uh, we are always changing. Um, as, as creatures, we are designed to be adaptable and, and we are designed to be reflexive to the world around us. And our brains are incredible tools and we should be constantly developing it, which means we should be constantly changing. I am a different person today than I was five years ago and five years before that, I was a different person. So I think it's just, you know, really what you want to focus on is being mindful and that's being present in the moment and dealing with your emotions uh, not vomiting on people but understanding how to manage and control your own emotions and also putting to work manifesting powers so that you create and walk into the existence that you want to have uh, now I have baby fever <laughs> I want kids, but I can't find a partner. I'm 36. I don't want to settle. Yeah, the bio clock is ticking. You can come get coaching uh, and to, to get some help on being more efficient with your dating. Uh, I have two kids, and I think having kids is more selfish. Really? So the 12 character traits are in No More Assholes. I don't divulge those on lives because I really want you to go get the education that's in No More Assholes. I made my mind to dedicate to my babies and myself for now and we'll definitely get your books. Love, love. What do I do for fun? work <laughs> I have to air quote it because work for me really isn't work I love 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 what I do I love what I do I keep saying this you guys are my oxygen I love what I do um, it feels so good you guys like you are emotionally rewarding you are so emotionally rewarding so it's funny because somebody asked me that when I was on a live the other day and my husband was in the house and I go, I go, babe, what do I do for fun? And he laughed and he goes, I think this is what you do for fun. And he's absolutely right. He's absolutely correct. Uh, I love my work too. I have a pet care business and massage therapist. That's awesome. Love that. Love that. We all should be getting paid doing what we love. I actually enjoy having my grandson more than my daughter, I guess because I'm older now. And that's like, you know, part of my consideration on like, guys, I honestly thought about having a kid for my mom. That's that's messed. But uh, like I like I really struggle with a decision to take away her opportunity to be a grandma. I'm the only one. Uh, I had a sister, she passed away when I was 17 and she was 21. I am my mom's only opportunity to have a grandchild. And I, I, I didn't take it lightly that I was taking that away from her. I really didn't. Oh, you're amazing, Anna. Thank you. 
Oh, you guys, you're amazing. You are amazing. All the sweetness in here. Thank you. I appreciate this. This is y'all feed me such beautiful words of affirmation. I love you. I love you. Uh, I feel guilty for being resentful that my husband doesn't have stable employment. Is that bad? No, I think those emotions are quite valid. What are ways to grow more with your boyfriend emotionally? I would grab fix that shit and do what's in that book because what that does is it creates emotional security within your relationship. When people feel emotionally safe, they do open up more and it brings the two of you closer together. Also, two kisses a day, minimum two kisses a day, minimum five seconds each. How do you manifest dating meditation? Oh, how do you manifest during meditation besides the I am statements? Um, the way that I manifest money is I picture money falling from the sky and, and, I, and I, I catch it and I don't catch all of it because there's so much money, right? But uh, so either I'll have like, like bills just falling like raindrops, just cascading from the sky and just like I'll, I'll hold the bucket and the bucket's already full and the bills are falling on top of the mound already in the bucket. And, and I'll like, you know, bring this bucket of money in me and accept it and take it and feel so grateful for it because it is, it exists. I have it. This is mine. I have everything. I have so much money. I can buy anything I want. I can do anything I want. And, and so this is how I manifest money for myself by envisioning it and absorbing it and accepting it and being grateful for it. So manifestation is imat oh look at that. manifestation. That was sweet, thank you. Manifestation is imagination, acceptance, and gratitude. I'm glad I started young. They are 18 and 15. I'll be having fabulous 40s. Yes, my husband did too. He was in his early 20s when he had his kids. And now he's 48 and they're in their mid twenties and they don't need him anymore. He's got that independence now. Thank you for the heart. Animal rights, lovely. I feel like I always lie to myself about my emotions. I keep ignoring them and sh change what they mean. I want a relationship, but when a good man comes, I start pushing him away. How can I work on that? Start with defining your next relationship. Um, when you become very clear about what it is that you want in a partner, when you have that, when you recognize them, you're like, okay, this is it. Um, also say yes to goodness, right? You may be feeling uncomfortable when something is better than anything you've ever had before. That's what we call fear of the unknown. That physical discomfort is the fear of the unknown. We seek what's familiar. So there's comfort and familiarity. When something is unfamiliar, you feel physically uncomfortable and you read that as a reason to reject it. I don't feel good, therefore it must be wrong. And then you reject it. So you need to be objective about things. You need to be logical. Use your logic, not your emotions. And if logically you know this is better than anything you've ever had, then you say, yes, goodness, thank you, I accept you. Yes, goodness, thank you, I accept you. And this is your mantra until the moment passes. So when you wanna push somebody away, wait for the moment to pass. You fix that shit, be a functional partner. So for manifesting a partner, I would just imagine and picture him with me. So absolutely, I manifested a partner for my husband's ex. Um, and I knew what I needed to manifest because I knew, I knew I knew what was necessary to get her off of his payroll. So what I did is I pictured her standing side by side with somebody, smile on her face, arms around each other. She had zero complaints. I conceptualized having zero complaints um, and I poured money on them. So who she ended up meeting was a guy who's had two strokes, so buddy doesn't talk much. Can we say nothing to complain about? 
uh, and he used to be an engineer, but because of his two strokes, he was getting um, disability checks to the tune of $80,000 a year. So money raining down from the sky. So that was what she needed, was somebody else to come along and buy her house and buy her a car. And that's what he did. So yes, envision, imagine, see it, feel it, and add some money into that as a bonus. Do you think men usually want to have kids and carry the family name over generations? I don't know how super common that is. And I don't know if it's men more than women. I want a coaching session from you, but I'm scared. I don't know why. It's okay. I'm much, I'm, as, as much as you may feel like I'm gentle here, I'm more gentle on coaching sessions. I really make it easy. Like, I really make it easy. The reason why you want a coaching session is because I'm making things easy for you. I make coaching sessions easy too. I love my work, love that. How long did it take to manifest a partner for? A few months. Is there such thing as people manifesting bad things on someone? Oh, probably. If I can manifest somebody good for someone, I can probably manifest something bad. My long-term thinking man is very stressed right now. He is in himself and is distant. Grab fix that shit, my love, so that you can manage yourself through this time and understand how to help him relax his brain. This is really going to help your relationship. What are your pronouns? Can you touch on fear of commitment in men and them not being able to talk about their feelings? So men who are looking for a relationship are not afraid of commitment. Um, men don't talk about their feelings. They show their feelings. It's that simple. Ooh, essential oils for your moods. How often do you do lives? At least once a day. I try to do, I, I do try to do three times a day. Um, but if I, if I skip a whole day, I kind of feel bad because I know that there are people who wait for that notification and I'm like, you know, an alleviation in their day, so. Hello. What is the root of manifesting? Universe, God, magic, just placebo effect, energy. Energy is the root of manifesting. Everything is energy. Everything is moved by energy. An atom is movement. Everything is energy in movement. Slower energy or faster energy. And so manifesting is nothing but you affecting energy. That's cute. Poured cherry tomatoes for my garden. First of the season. Placed one on everyone's plate for supper. Hey, Joshua. My long-term thinking man is... Yes, yes, yes. I love your energy. Thank you. Your lives are literally the best part of my day. I so appreciate you. Ah, brown eyed girl. So much love. I have a Canadian accent. Is that right? How often should you manifest the same thing daily? Yes, daily. This is honestly like um, a few times a day, like not just once a day, but like you're in your car, nothing on your mind. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do some manifesting. You go for a walk. I'm going to do some manifesting. You're meditating. I'm going to do some manifesting. You're doing the dishes. I'm going to do some manifesting. Canada is three hours ahead. Uh, could be, could be, depending on where you are. Hi. I love you. <gasps> necklace and shirt. Love the necklace and shirt. Earrings go very well. 
men will show you how they feel about you. Yes, they do. They show. Men are not talkers. They're showers. They're doers. Somebody's answer to what is manifesting. Somebody, Joshua said, a power beyond us. It is not beyond us. It is the power within us. It is not beyond. It is in. We are the creators. We are the power source. We are the powerful. We are the power. It's not beyond us. It's in us. I've not seen Celine Dion. What is manifesting? Uh, manifesting is the act of creating your own destiny. If a girl cheated on you once and says it was a mistake and asked for one more chance, can you give one? If you want, you can renegotiate a resumption of the relationship. And I say a resumption because at, like when cheating happens, there needs to be a split. Like you broke the relationship contract. Our contract included monogamy you did not follow the monogamy clause therefore the contract is null and void making this relationship null and void oh you want to renegotiate let's talk about renegotiation we are the lightning rods to the energy we are not the lightning rods my friend we are the energy What if a guy used to want to cuddle, but now they don't? Now they don't? What if a guy used to want to cuddle, but now they don't? To the curb? Kick the motherfucker to the curb? You, you don't want to cuddle this? You don't want to hold this? You don't want to put your arms around this? You don't want to tickle my back? You don't want to snuggle me? No. This ain't going to work for me anymore. That's my opinion. Up to you what you want to do. I don't want to be in a relationship with somebody who doesn't want to be affectionate with me. That is my worst nightmare. Do you believe everything happens for a reason? Yes. Can you manifest anything? I don't see why not. I don't see why not. I really don't. Are you a psychologist? No, I am a coach. We are the energy, Joshua. Yes, we are the energy. Thanks for your insight. Can someone really change if they want to? Live together a year. I have three kids. He has one. We split. Now discussing working on it. Pointers. <laughs> I'm going to point to this book right here. Fix that shit. This is 50 chapters. 50 things you need to know to make it work. Let's let's get some music hello love loves who wants a notification when i go live say i do what is the strongest way to manifest writing it down or are thoughts strong enough um so i manifest without writing we are both reading it good 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 there you go my love yeah uh i manifest without writing but writing is good writing is useful I, I'm not going to diss writing. I'm not going to say don't bother. Use every tool. Uh, super nervous about going into a healthy relationship. Is there any way to calm my nerves? Yes, knowledge is power. Read, read Fix That Shit. Fix That Shit is going to help you manage your emotions and understand how to be functional and healthy and behave in a, in, in a way that's going to create closeness and intimacy and emotional security in your relationship. Fix that shit is your solution, lovely. Oh, that's cute. My son heard you and said, I do. That's adorable. Uh, TikTok never notices me when you go live. In the, even though I click the bell, oh, it never gives you a notification. Oh, my love. Uh, those of you who want a notification when I go live, 
Click my picture here once or twice, you're gonna get a pop-up and the pop-up is the bell. Click on the bell when you do that, say I just did. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna go do some work, you guys. I'm gonna do some work. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do some work on my audiobook. Um, before I go, does anybody want me to do a description, a short description about what each of my books are about? A book walkthrough. <gasps> I bought a money tree hoping it brings me good luck. Do you believe in that stuff? I think what's going to bring you good luck has more to do with your intentional thoughts on a daily basis aligned with um, actions that do align with your thoughts. Yes. Uh, can fix that shit repair any relationship? You need to be in a relationship with a generous long-term thinker who loves you. That is the key. Fix that shit does not work if you're with a selfish short-term thinker. Yes, yes for the book, for the book, I was going to say book roulette. Uh, book walk through. Okay, let's do this. Uh, Comeback Queen is going to help you heal your heart um, and feel better after a breakup. No More Assholes is going to help you make sure the next partner you choose is nothing like the last one. Uh, unless, you know, it's repeating some of the good qualities. But uh, here with No More Assholes, if you follow the advice in here, you will find yourself a generous long-term thinker who loves you, who passes the 12 character traits, and is absolutely amazing. Once you get into that relationship, you want to solidify it. So after the first kiss, it's going to help you set a strong foundation, making sure you don't turn little things into big fights as you transition from the courtship phase to the reality phase and things shift and change. You're going to be prepared for the change. You're going to be okay. Uh, fix that shit is going to bring you to zero fighting in your relationship. You're going to learn how to manage your emotions. Hello, love. Manage your emotions. Understand your partner. Bring up those sensitive things without them getting defensive, which means you guys are going to be A-OK -okay and be resolving things together. Custom made goes super well with fix that shit. This book answers two questions. What is my purpose and how can I monetize it? If you are codependent, you need your purpose to be somebody who's not your relationship, something that is not your relationship. You have to make your purpose your purpose, not your partner your purpose. Um, stop getting upset if they don't text you back within an hour. <laughs> uh, Dating 101, Understanding the Drives, Behaviors, and Emotions Behind Love. This is a textbook. This is perfect for teenagers and nerds. There is no swearing in that book. Fake Love Need Not Apply, How to Avoid Posers, Losers, Scammers, and Predators. Um, you will find this as a free ebook in the link tree in my bio. Say Yes to Goodness, How to Be Happy. This is 10 Steps to a Complete and Happy You. And then The Perfect Play, Men, this is your book. This is your dating book. Uh, lots of advice on how to have good mental health, how to be appealing to a woman who's a generous long-term thinker, how to be the generous long-term thinker she's looking for, even how to get over your last relationship if you're still hurting over that. Love. Have to be a generous long-term thinker and in love. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes, yes. My boyfriend thinks you only have women. How do I show him you are here to help us both? I did I did a recent TikTok where um, it was a guy writing in about a financially irresponsible girlfriend. And I said he had to dump the motherfucker. So you can show him that TikTok. Um, you can show him the TikTok where um, I talk about what my husband does for me as an example of me teaching women, um, you know, what they, what they should be wanting in a partner um i teach women what to do for their partners is uh, he hasn't watched enough tiktoks thinks he only help women um hmm yeah he surely hasn't watched enough tiktoks and he might have watched some tiktoks but doesn't like what i say because he's a selfish short-term thinker i don't know if he's a selfish short-term thinkers don't like me so, um, if you look at the 12 
character traits and no more assholes. Does he pass? Uh, I can't see your profile when you're alive. What name do I search on Amazon? Um, Amazon, you can you can type Chantal Hyde, C H A N T A L H E I D E. You're welcome. I do, I do, I do. I see now. I always join your lives. I feel so safe here. You give such good advice and lots of positive vibes. So much love. <laughs> Sorry, and thanks. Are you Canadian? We're so somebody somebody said, I'm I'm coming to Canada. How do I prepare? I said, I said, get ready to say I'm sorry when somebody bumps into you. Uh all right, my loves. Um gonna do some recording, gonna do some work on no more assholes, get that audiobook out, gotta get it in your hands. A happier woman, she does more to make their partner happy. I love you. I will be back. I will be back. You know I don't stay away for long because I never do. Um, I might I might set up the tripod and just just film myself uh, doing the um, audiobook. I might do that. So you you might see the live pop up again tonight, but it's not like it's not a Q and A. It's just me doing my audiobook. Um, happier woman she does more to make their partner happy so the partner benefits from a happier woman yes 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 100 my love you got it you got it that's why our men want us to be happy a good man wants you to be happy he strives for your happiness because he knows you reinfect the relationship with happiness Mwah. i'll see you soon lovelies